Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for today's webinar on growing steamers. I'm Chris Miller from the Institution's Account Team at Parkstown, and I'm joined by today's presenters from Growing, Joe White, Senior Technical Services Manager, and Walter Track, Product Specialist, Cooking. Today, Joe will dive into an overview of growing steamer installation, and then we'll hear from Walter, who will provide insight on steamer maintenance and water treatment. I'll wrap things up with a brief demo of how to use our new serial number lookup feature on Parkstown.com to find your parts for growing steamers. And we'll leave just a few minutes at the end for any Q&A that you may have. And now let's turn it over to Joe, who will kick us off with a how-to for properly installing and connecting your growing steamers. Joe White, uh, Senior Service Technical Manager for Unified Brands. It's certainly a pleasure to speak with you this morning about steamers, installation, and operating your steamer, which is some very important things. There's some very, very important steps I'm going to share with you that will prevent the majority of your service calls. First, we'll move right into water supply. The incoming water supply, uh, the factory, rec factory recommendation is three-quarter of inch NH connection. Cold water supply hose, rigid pipe is not required. Water pressure flow should equal the 30 to 60 PSI. And if it's above 60 PSI, we certainly want to add a pressure regulator. Um, and we're saying flow, not static. So we want to make certain that we're all on the same page. You open that metal toolbox, you're putting in flow versus static. So 30 to 60 PSI of flow. Also, make certain all connections are tight with no leaks. That is absolutely important for numerous reasons. Next, we'll move into your water connections. Is the water hot or treated? That's always a great question. If it's cold water and it's untreated, a single water connection is okay. Cody and Brian and Mike, no worries. Just add in a single water connection here, and you'll actually run that cold water into your untreated water, which goes out to your condensate spray down to your drain, or your treated water that goes into that generator that's going to actually generate the steam. What if it's hot? Hot water, treated water is okay. Uh, the dual water connections are required, though, and uh, keep in mind that dual water connections are standard on all models manufactured after September 2001. So if it's a hot water, warm water, the dual water connection is uh, part number for the HY3E or 5E is identified here. Your HY6E or 6G is identified here. There's a 107066. HY12 106370, 106370 for HY12V, and for HY12G, G106631. So make sure to keep those in mind if you're um, apply, if you're installing the unit with a hot water or treated water. Next, we'll talk about the incoming gas. Half-inch MPT gas pipe for an HY5G or an HY6G. Also require a three-quarter inch NPT for HY12G. Gas supply piping must be large enough to provide the following BTUs per cavity and per hour. So if it's an HY5G, we're saying 62,000 BTUs. An HY6G, 90,000 BTUs. An HY12G, 180,000 BTUs per cavity per hour. Your supply pressure, guys, if it's natural gas, we're saying anywhere between 5 inches and 14 inches on your water column. Your LP should be 12 inches or 14 inches. And a lot of this information is also shared in the operator's manual. What about gas connections? Is the gas piping hard pipe or flexible hose? Now, I'll be the first to say, in most cases, no one really likes the hard pipe situations, right? Can't move them, can't get behind them, et cetera, et cetera. But in a lot of applications, they are hard pipe. Pipe size must be pipe must be sized for the BTU requirements, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Make sure to minimize your elbows to reduce restrictions to gas flow and to prevent low manifold gas pressure. Again, these are all things that we need to capture, put into our mental toolbox, because they can certainly minimize a lot of service calls. What about your flexible gas hose? Gas hose must be sized for your unit requirement. Refer to the sizing chart on the package. Flow capacity will vary. Domestic gas hoses are generally too small, restricting gas flow and causing low manifold pressure. 
And the vast majority of the installs, the flexible gas hose, there's a doormat hose on the back of the package. There they have that listing. Just make certain as uh, we understand and recognize the ID versus the OD when we're taking a look at those to make certain that we are certainly in compliance with those recommendations for your, your connections. Proper installation. This is always a fun one. Now, we're looking here, we're going, is this 12 inches of clearance required? 12 inches of clearance is required on the right side for this unit. And as you're looking, I got to tell you, I never know we made, we made a double G unit. It's a growing garland unit. As you see, that unit is right next to this garland range. If you could imagine, on the right side of this unit is where all your electronic controls, your motor, and et cetera. Here, if you were to put just on top of that range, you have that flame coming out, you can only imagine that the internal temperature of this starts to affect the actual controls on the unit, et cetera, parts, hoses, wiring harnesses, et cetera, can create problems for that. Another thing you want to make certain of in the proper installation, we'll talk about in another slide here, is making sure this unit is level from front to back. I know some out there, Daniel and Alex are probably saying, hey, this unit is uh, leaning. Exactly. It certainly wasn't me taking the photo. This is actual leaning. So make certain it is correct, leveling it front to back, and it's even. Gas steamers for your uh, under a hood, it's a must. Um, electric steamers must be under a hood unless approved by your local code and agency. So a lot of states, uh, city and states have different local codes, so we always say make certain that you are complying with the local code in that city or state. Um, for those installations. Now your drain connections. Drain, uh, drain one, as we're showing here, there are two inch air gap required, no installation hazards or what we certainly in, want to make certain we are uh, communicating. And then we're talking about drain two, reduce the number of elbows, lower unit front to back and right to left, as I mentioned before, then slightly towards the drain. Here you're seeing the drains and you see a number of elbows. I'll be honest with you, I had a great opportunity to visit this site and I didn't know if they were getting paid by the elbow or by the well. But as you see, there are numerous elbows inside of this drain which creates certain restrictions. All right, we want to make certain that we are aware that when we're draining this, we are aware, conscious of the, drain, the amount of elbows in the drain area. The other thing is where the drains are located, okay? Well, there's gonna be some areas where this person that is operating this kettle could have some issues here. Um, and typically on a floor drain, guys, make certain everyone is aware that a floor drain does not fill in for the two-inch air gap that we recommend. If this floor becomes filled with water, then it compromises the two-inch air gap we have, and now you start to bring water back into the unit, and that could be an issue. On the photo here, we're showing the same as the floor drain here. If you could imagine someone coming to the front of the unit, this is actually drained out towards the front of the unit. There's also an issue here, and I certainly understand that there's some installation situations that may be a little bit more challenging than others. And if you come across those, we certainly say, give us a call and let us help you out with those. In most cases, we pipe this and manifold it back down the back of the unit out to the drain that's going to be far from where the operator will be using it, and that's more of a secure situation. Thanks. That's been my time. I'd like to turn it over now to Walter Trad. Hey, everyone. This is Walter. Uh Hope you guys are all doing well today, and I appreciate your time away from your busy schedules. Um, we're just going to briefly touch base on growing steamers and the basic maintenance of them, and also some water quality and water treatment uh, issues. Okay, so we're going to start off with the growing, the growing steamers, uh, basic steamer maintenance, water quality and treatment, like I just said, and then we're also going to just briefly touch on the growing tr water treatment systems that we offer, and then we're going to wrap this up with the free startup program. So, as we all know, not every steamer can do every job. You have batch cookers, you have, you know, batch applications, you have a la carte applications, you have applications that require both, applications that require shellfish, um, applications that do not have a drain line or a water line available at the facility. So we're going to start with our Intec and our Vortex. These are both connectionless, boilerless steamers, which means they don't have a steam generator, they don't have a boiler, and they do not require a drain line nor a water line. So the image on the left is our electric Intec, and the image on our right is our Vortex. Uh, the Intec is available in gas and electric. The Vortex is electric only. So 
both these units have to be manually filled since there's no water connection. Uh, if the water gets low or when the water gets low, there's going to be an indicator light on that's going to prompt you to add water. Okay. If the indicator light is ignored or um, just missed and not, not seen, then there's an automatic shutoff that will stop the heat um, and will not allow the unit to burn up. On these two units, uh, no water treatment is required. So there's no traditional deliming, and there's, there's no need for a water treatment system. There's no floats, um, no generator, no boiler. So basically, when you clean it after the end of each use, uh, it's, had, it's equal parts water and white vinegar. Uh, and that's it. Um, the Intec, you know, is, it's um, offering gas and electric. The electric model that you see here has a NSF-approved cook-and-hold feature. And the great thing about this cook-and-hold feature is you can actually set the hold temperature to between 100 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The gas model, by design, does not offer that. Um, the Vortex to the right, it being all electric, uh, it has an automatic hold. Uh, it sets at approximately 165 degrees. One application that you do not use in these type open water reservoirs, because if you think about it, inside each one of these cavities, it's basically like a pot with water, and the heating source brings that water to a boil. So shellfish is one application that you would not use in these. Um, shellfish secrete fatty proteins and salines, and when that hits the boiling water, it foams up and causes a huge mess. Um, so these are batch cookers and no shellfish. Vortex to the right also has an optional condensate cap, and as Joe had mentioned in one of his previous slides, that to get with your local agency to find the code to see if the steamer can be placed outside of a hood. Uh, some local agencies allow the Vortex to be placed outside of a hood with the condensate cap, and some do not. So before you purchase the condensate cap, you know, please get approval for it. All right, this is our smart steam. Uh, it's our most versatile steamer and our uh, most popular steamer. Um, this is a boilerless connected steamer, which means it has the, the water reservoir in it, like the Intec and the Vortex, but it does have a steam lid, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, but it's boilerless and connected, which means it has a water line and a drain line connected. And the smart steams also have dual water connections. So for the treated water, you have one connection. That's, what's, that's what goes through the treatment system, whether it's a cartridge filter system or an RO system. And the other connection is untreated, which is just for the condensate spray. So why do we do that? It's to separate that treated water from the non untreated water so as to extend the life of the water treatment system. Um, Joe did mention that 30 to 60 PSI is the range of our incoming water flow, not static. And the smart steam requires anywhere from three-quarter to a gallon and a half of water flow per cavity per minute. Now, I mentioned this had a steam lid. The steam lid, if you look at the bottom pan on this picture, the steam lid goes under that pan, and it, it covers that water reservoir. So when you open the door, all that energy, all that steam escapes, but what's under that steam lid is being held in that water reservoir. So when the door is closed, recovery is much, much quicker than the Intec and the Vortex. So this unit can be um, used for batch cooking. It can be used uh, for the majority of a la carte applications. And also with that steam lid, it has the ability to catch those proteins and salines from shellfish. So if someone has three or four items on their menu, they could, they could use this unit as well for its shellfish application. Now, if it's Joe's Crab Shack, this may not be the best, uh, the best solution for them. Also on the smart steam, there's it being boilerless with no generator, and no boiler, it is, it requires no traditional deliming. Again, just like the insect and the vortex, equal parts of water and white vinegar. This is our hyper steam. For you guys that know Chef Steve, our corporate chef, he calls this the hammer. Uh, this is a very powerful unit. It's a steam generator based unit. It has a near instant recovery and it does everything. Uh, it, it batch cook it, cooks it, all a car cooks. It does any type of shellfish. Um, has dual water connections, just like the smart steam for the same reasons. Uh, one thing we do recommend on this unit is even if the water quality test comes back and the water quality is within our standards, 
we still recommend the pure steam water treatment system. And the main reason for that is we know that end users tend to neglect maintenance, right? They may not uh, delime as often as they should or even at all in some, some locations. So this will help, uh, even though the water is within our standards, there's still the possibility of scale buildup. One thing I did not mention on the on the hyper steam is it I don't think I mentioned it. It does require traditional deliming. You see the deliming port at the top left front. Uh, that's where you add the water. I mean the uh, deliming solution, and then you just press the deline button. Okay, high plus. This is our boiler based system. Uh, it has a 15 psi boiler inside the cabinet that you see. It operates at about 12 psi. Um, this is is just like the hammer. It has instant recovery. Uh, it requires um, traditional deliming, even though all the deliming also requires a, a technician to do the deliming. The end user does not perform the deliming on this unit, uh, but it's a very powerful unit that covers every area of application. And as you see here, to the right of the, the cavities, there's a kettle. So this unit can also power adjacent equipment, whether it be uh, a cabinet-mounted kettle, as you see here, or a smaller um, or kettle adjacent to it. Um, these are the water requirements. Uh, this is these are the water requirements for every steamer that we have that could require water treatment. And again, this one has dual water connections. So basic steamer maintenance. Of course, D lime necessary for the applicable mo applicable models. So the hyper steam and the high plus would require D liming. The smart steam intech and the vortex just a equal equal parts water and white vinegar. Wipe the cavity out and be sure to leave the door open after cleaning. Uh, it does a couple of things when you leave that door open. Uh, it extends the life of the gasket because if you close the door when you're not using it, the gasket is compressed. And um, leaving the door open will extend the life of that gasket. Also leaving the door open allows the, the inside cavity to, to be able to air out, air dry, and never have that musty smell that some of these units uh, that you see in kitchens have. Um, before each use, inspect the, the gasket for cracks. Also inspect the cooking chamber for any issues that you may see there. And any units that have the overflow drains, uh, inspect those for blockage. And for the, uh, for the smart steam unit, we do uh, include a overflow drain cleaning brush and instructions for that. And also be sure to clean your cavity daily. Uh, it's so important uh, to keep scale build up, to keep it sanitary. And, and other reasons as well. And then annually, inspect the electrical wires and connections and the control apartment uh, itself. So now we're on the water quality and treatment. And we all know, especially you guys see it every day, uh, water quality is the our biggest challenge with steamers. Um, improper treatment or no water treatment on, depending on the water quality, I mean, it can destroy a steamer, and it can just destroy it very quickly. I've seen some cavities rust out um, within 24, 48 hours. So proper water treatment is imperative, and it will extend the life of your steamer and keep it performing as it was designed to perform. Um, as we all know, repair costs are very, very, very expensive. Um, so monitor your treatment system. Replace the components as needed. Um, some some components say change every six months, but depending on your water quality, you may need to change every three months or you may need to change every nine months. Uh, so just keep it monitored. So here are a few of our growing water quality system, treatment systems. As you see here, uh, these are our water quality standards, 30 to 60 parts per million on total dissolved solids. Hardness is less than 60. Chlorine, chloramine less than 0.1. Chloride less than 30. Silica less than 12 undissolved solids less than five microns. And also the pH needs to be between seven and nine. Uh, if it gets below seven, the water actually becomes corrosive. So some of the water treatment systems that, that we provide, is of course, like I mentioned earlier, the pure steam system, it reduces scale, chlorine, and sediment. Now, if your water quality test comes back with heavy sediment, we do offer a pre-filter system that reduces that heavy sediment before it goes into the pure steam system. So they'll extend the life of a pure steam system. Uh, we have a QTI-1 plus CR system. That actually reduces chloramines, scale, chlorine, and sediment. 
and then we have an XF uh, FXTT plus CR, and that is if you're this is only for reducing chloramine. So if your water quality is great except for the chloramine, then you would want this filter and not have to you know not worry about the scale chlorine sediment because it didn't come into play. And then we have the Smart Steam um, treatment system that is only a scale reducer. As you see on here, the majority of these are RO systems. Um, when the TDS exceeds the, our water quality standards, that's when the RO system is going to come into play. Note one thing that RO systems do not remove chloramine. And I've heard so many folks over the years say, I have chloramines, I need an RO system. But RO systems do not reduce, remove chloramine. Uh, chloramine is a gas and it just passes right through. Now, another portion of RO systems very crucial is sizing the correct system. Some of the things to look at on that is, you know, know how much water is needed to supply the unit, the initial fill for the steamer, and how many gallons per hour uh, that it requires to operate properly. And also know how long the equipment will run at any given time. That's where you're going to need to know. You're going to need to know that as far as how big of a holding tank that you're going to require. And then one aspect that I see so many people not take into consideration is not finding out what the coldest incoming water temperature is for the year. So here in Georgia, as you can tell by my accent, here in Georgia, our water never, our incoming water never gets really cold at all. Uh, but maybe up in Boston, that coldest temperature of the year is very cold. Well, the colder that incoming water supply is, the less that RO system is going to produce. So it may supply enough water and the unit run properly during the, the, the warmer months, and in the colder months, it may not perform at all. So that's very important. And then if you do require a holding tank, whether it's a 16-gallon or a 50-gallon, you know, find out what space is available because they do take up some room. So before ordering it, make sure there's room for it. Last thing we want to happen is for the RO system to get there and there's no room for the, for the tank. All right, here we go, our growing free startup program. We have always offered a growing free startup program for all growing equipment, right? So it's technician comes out, we you know, we schedule an ASA and they go out and they inspect the installation and the operation of every piece of growing equipment that's on that, that startup. Uh, we've taken it a step far, further with our steamer line. So smart, all of our steamers, Smart Steam, Hyper Steam, High Plus, Intech, and Vortex. Once that free startup has been completed, all those units will receive an additional one-year warranty parts and labor. Now, specifically for the Smart Steam, the Hyper Steam, and the High Plus, there will be a water quality test that is sent with the unit in the same bag as the operator manual. And this is for the ASA to gather the samples and send them to the lab. And once the lab receives them, does their magic, they send the results back to me or someone at Growin, and we recommend the correct water treatment system. If that, if that recommended water treatment system is purchased, installed, and maintained, it has to be maintained, even water-related service issues will be covered for the warranty period. So just another way that we've taken another step forward uh, to ensure that our customers are taken care of. That's it. Thanks, guys. I hope you got something out of this, and I look forward to any questions you have. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Walter. So more information will be available on the Growing Free Startup Program. Uh, we'll be sending that out in our post-event email for you all, along with contact information for both Joe and Walter to reach out directly. Growing is also one of the manufacturers participating in our serial number lookup feature on Parstown.com. If you haven't seen this feature yet, it's a great way to find the specific parts associated with your growing equipment. You can search by serial number in several ways, which I'm going to show you now. So right from our main page here on parsound.com, there's two different ways that you can access the serial number lookup. One way is right here in this top toolbar, you'll see this little section here called search by serial number. And by clicking on that, you can see Growing listed right here. Once you click there, you'll then be prompted to enter a serial number. And we have an example one here that I will type in for you guys. So 
So as you'll see, uh, we have a match here for this growing serial number. Once you get to this page, you will see this yellow header here that will have any of the warranty information associated with the model and serial number. You can see this piece of equipment has a start date of uh, December 2013 and an end date of December 2014. You'll also be able to see a list of all the parts that we have linked associated with the serial number lookup. Another way to do it by manufacturer is going to the Shop by Manufacturer tab where you can then go to Growing Directly. And then we have a nice search by serial number box here where you can also type in the serial number for your growing equipment. So either way that works easiest for you is how we want to make sure that you have access to all these parts as quickly as possible just to make finding and buying these food service parts fun and easy. Now we have a couple minutes at the end here that we can run through some of the questions that we have available. So we have a question here regarding the growing startup program. And the question is, is that warranty coverage for water-related issues when approved water filter installed and maintained new? Uh, yes. Um, the water-related issues are covered under the warranty period if the uh, end user purchases, installs, and, ma and maintains the recommended uh, water treatment system that we recommend from Growin. And also that does have to be purchased new and it has to be purchased from Growin. Thanks, Walter. Good we also question. have another question here regarding who can order the free startup? Uh, anyone can order the free startup. Uh, if you go to our website, unifiedbrands.net, uh, there will be a tab for to schedule a free startup. I believe it says inspection. And you just fill out a very short form and click submit. And then our team at UB takes over from there and schedules it with the ASA. Next question we have in here is, when does the startup need to be requested and completed? Startup needs to be requested within 30 days of purchase um, and completed, um, I mean, just in the normal time. There's no set time for the completion. Looks like we just have a couple more here. Uh, we have, who takes the water sample at the installation site using the water test kit? Anyone can actually take the water sample. Our rep groups, uh, they have water test kits on hand. So a rep could do it. Uh, a dealer could request a test kit. Um, end user could, but normally it's the ASA when they do the uh, Excellent. And it looks like we have one more that's not in here. Can the end user use another brand of water treatment and still have the warranty cover water-related issues? No, they have to use what we recommend and purchase from, from Growin. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again, Joe and Walter, for bringing your growing expertise uh, over here with us at Parkstown and collaborating on this presentation. And thank you all for attending. It looks like we've uh, ended a little bit ahead of schedule, so we'll be able to add 15 minutes back to your lunch hours. Um, so you will see a short survey headed your way right after the close of this presentation. And we really want to know what you think. So I uh, really look forward to hearing your feedback. Uh, we also love to offer more events like this in the future. So your feedback will really help inform us of the topics, format, and timing that best meets your needs. Thanks also again from Growing for your time and valuable information provided today. Again, as a reminder, you will all receive a copy of this presentation today to share out with your team or for those that were unable to attend live today. Everyone, have a great afternoon.